Blog Talk Radio. You are now listening to the most talked about Blog Talk Radio station in the universe. Walk in his way, Impact Voice Radio. Be prepared to have your mind stimulated, your spirit elevated in ways you couldn't even imagine. Introducing your host and the mastermind behind this unforgettable experience, Furman Jackson Jr. You will not be disappointed. Let's go! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Walking This Way Impact Voice. I'm your host, Furman Jackson Jr. I thank you everybody for tuning in on this lovely Saturday morning broadcast live from my city, my hometown of Mobile, Alabama. And I'm very excited about this morning's um, guests that we have coming on this morning, um, a husband-wife team who's you know, on their own business. And we're going to be getting into that this morning, you know, with the balance of marriage, um, on your own business, and family as well. And we know that's a big responsibility all by itself but we got people that's in that arena already that's already been equipped in that to explain you no know, to share their knowledge share their influence and also share about their business and, and things of that nature so i just thank you everybody for tuning in this morning and before we get ready to get started i'm about to get ready to put my guest in here on impact voice and i want to say good morning welcome to walking this way impact voice good morning good morning Morning. I thank y'all for taking time. Y'all be the schedule on um, to be a part of the broadcast for uh, January of 2020. Actually, the first episode of 2020. I do thank y'all for that. And we just want to um, kick it off um, with um, for the start of a new year. Of course, for everybody, new start, new beginning, new era, new no new everything for everybody this morning. And I know with your landscaping business and many other projects um, for the listening audience. Give them a view of who this lovely couple is. Um, basically, um, our lawn and landscape business, we service Mobile and Baldwin County. Um, we do everything from commercial, um, residential, we, um, service HOAs, we service, um, a lot of blight properties that consist of, um, eyesores or, overgrown um, property. So um, we do a mixture of different things, but our mission um, with our lawn and landscape company is to um, make sure that um, the land is taken care of. You know, a lot of times we um, <clears throat> we service uh, clients that are either too busy because um, life, you know, is busy um, with things that we have going on. And then we service a lot of uh, clients that maybe have um, gotten up in age and they can't physically take care of their properties anymore. Um, and so our mission is just to make sure that, you know, your outside space looks just as pleasant as your inside space. Okay, and um, how long have y'all been in um, how long have y'all been in service with your landscaping um company? Uh, we've been in business since 2016. Uh, April 22nd will be our fourth anniversary of um uh, being in business. Um, uh, my husband has been doing this kind of work since he was a child, so he's very comfortable in his element, and he's very, very great at what he does. So we're just thankful to be going into a fourth year and um, to experience the growth that we have had over the course of the three and a half years that we've been in business. So we're just thankful for it. And that's awesome stuff. And uh, working together, that's a beautiful thing, too, when you see a husband and wife uh, working together, and that's what you know. We want the listen audience to you know see that and and to experience that. But working together, how is that as a husband and wife working together as um 
partners within um, the company? Okay, well, I'll I'll first uh, comment on it, and then I'll let you uh, hear Larry's point of view. Um, us working together, um, we're a team in the home, team in marriage, team in business. Um, it's very, very rewarding at times, and then at times, you know, uh, it has our um, – it has our triumphs and then it has our trials or, you know, a better way to uh, say it. Um, we're two totally different people. He's more of an introvert. I'm more of an extrovert. And so our strengths and weaknesses, I think, is what makes us uh, so influential in business. Um and the fact that we're willing to work together behind the scenes and willing to work together in the field, I think, is another one of our great points. People respond well to it, and people respect it a good bit. So um, working together in business and in marriage, um, it is rewarding because you get to see um, – you get to experience and you get to appreciate – uh, your spouse in um, different situations and in different multitudes, whether it's personally or professionally, I believe. Mm-hmm. Cool. cool, awesome. And um, Larry, I know you're here. You know, I know you want to bring you know with your side of you and um, from your experience of working with your wife in that arena. What is your experience for the men that may be listening, that may be working with their wives, or looking forward to working with their lives, or their wives in um, the entrepreneurial world? Um, I know every situation is different, but in mine, I would say my weak points or her strong points, and vice versa. So it kind of works out perfectly at the end of the day. Oh yeah, that's good. I totally agree with that because um, you know, you complement one another, you complement each other, um, right. because you know, somebody bringing something to the table because we don't know everything. I like with men, we got that tunnel vision. Women look at the whole big picture, in my opinion, because women can see stuff more than we can see it, and they can see that stuff yeah. way before it hits us. And that that's yeah. that uniqueness come in, and then we humble ourselves. To you know, to herself, the criticism, the healthy criticism, you no, know, the correction from that snippet of how God set everything up, where the man is the head, but the woman is to help me. I mean, she helps me. I mean, that's a very important thing. And also, I want to um, the the listening on, especially those you know starting out this year, that they can to learn how to experience that to 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 actually hear a real life couple, not someone that's on television, but someone who's actually living this thing in real life that they can benefit from that, learn from that, um, and things of that nature. Also, my next question is, how did y'all, you know, how did this union all came together um, with y'all? You mean, how do we get together? Came together, how yeah, we... met. Yeah, how y'all got together? Oh. Uh, well, I'll let him go ahead and tell the. Uh, <laughs> well, we initially met. <laughs> I initially met her back in oh either oh two or oh three, and um, she was what grade were you in? Was you, were you in high school? Oh, yeah, I was actually. in high school. I was in high school. I, I think know. she was in her senior year. I was already out of school, and um, so her on Easter Sunday. And we, uh, I'm not going to lie, my mouth literally dropped all the way to the ground. I had to the toilet off the ground. <laughs> Once I did that, I approached them, and, you know, we exchanged them. Was, and we talked for a while that summer, but she ended up going away to college. And I actually went up there trying to find her and everything, but to no success. And it took me 12 years to find her again. And I told her, once I found her again, that she wasn't getting away from me this time. And that's exactly how it went. Wow. 
All right, that's good. And just being determined and being consistent. And um until you um until she came around again, that's a beautiful uh story to hear from a man perspective on knowing that that's the woman that he wanted, the woman that he wanted to be with. That I respect that to a whole lot. Being consistent mm-hmm. and being determined to have this woman. Um I was like I said, I know um <laughs> <laughs> and I know it was. Let's just listen to you. Listen to you. I know it was. And the, the thing about it is, you were so determined and so focused. Some men probably would just gave up and say, "Oh, it ain't no." But you was being consistent with it. Um, explain, like, just listen to that part. Were you being consistent in that area of just searching and knowing that was it? Explain to the listener or explain to the men who may be feel like giving up or just don't we don't even care no more. So that's just something big what you just said there um earlier. Um let me see the best way to explain it um as far as being a man, it, it's just a, a certain feeling you'll get, you know, when you know it's that person because it's it's a feeling you'll never experience again or with anyone else. And um uh, I mean, basically, when I, it was just like, it's hurt, you know, that's the best way I can explain it. And I just knew it was hurt, like it was a feeling that I had. I guess it was, hmm. you could say it was in my spirit, you know. And obviously I wasn't wrong because she's the one for real. <laughs> and that's a blessing, just remind me of uh, Isaac and Rebecca. You know, when he first <laughs> laid eyes on Rebecca, he he loved her for the rest of his days. You know, it just takes that one moment, especially when you got God in the mix of everything. And that's a beautiful thing we bring two souls together. We know the Bible says, you "No, know, when a man finds a wife, finds a good thing. And also obtains favor from the Lord. So we know that it's a good thing when that woman's there. And also favor comes with that woman, too. So, And also we know that a woman is a gift from God because... You no, know, God made it, gave that, that gift of companionship. So to the men out there listening, you know, honor the women. Um, they are a gift from God. They they are they are unique. So we got to go back to the basis of life. I also want to hear from the woman perspective as well for the ladies that are also listen. We heard from the men perspective. So we want to hear from the woman perspective. Um, when I first met him, it was something about, um, his eyes. He's very, very soft-spoken. Um, he doesn't really say much, but, um, his body language and his eye contact, um, really spoke to me, um, more than, you know, his vocal, um, even back 17, 18 years ago. And what I loved about him is um, when we initially um, started back conversating, um, he was telling me about a lot of his hopes and a lot of his dreams and a lot of his aspirations. Um, And it was something that I had already um, not necessarily what we're doing now, but I saw the greatness in him even back then. I really didn't know, you know, what he was going to be into or what he was going to be doing, but um, I kind of saw, you know, this entrepreneurial spirit, and we kind of talk about that um, from time to time when we just kind of sit and talk. But... um I knew, you know, that I could trust him. I knew that he was very, very honest. I knew it was he was the person that, you know, I could share certain things with without um any judgment. And um he was very, very encouraging. And so, um we just kind of fit together like a puzzle, you know, a lot of people, it was funny, I was talking to um, my cousin maybe a week ago, 
and she was talking about a lot of uh, significant others, whether boyfriend or girlfriend, fiancés or married people, just feel like they're not compatible. And a lot of people think compatibility is being alike. But my view of compatibility is two pieces fitting together like a puzzle. When you think about a puzzle, Mm -hmm. a puzzle is not two of the same pieces. If a puzzle was two of the same pieces, they would fit together, if that makes sense. And so I, I view our relationship as a puzzle. You know, his differences. And my differences, you know, are totally different. Our similarities are totally different. But what we're looking for is those differences and similarities that are different between the two of us to fit together perfectly. And I think that's um, what compatibility is. And so um, I knew he was the one – Two, because when we first started um, talking or initiating a relationship, my um, father was uh, diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and his health was failing. And it was a lot of things that the family had to physically do for him on our own before we, you know, hired outside help to come in and help us. And he was Johnny on the spot. Whatever I needed, whether it was bathing him, clothing him, picking up something from the store, he did it and he never complained. And, you know, for a lot of men, just to be hands-on like that, um, he really had to feel a certain way or love me in a certain way to help me take care of the first man that I fell in love with, which was my father. And so um, I knew she was going back then, but that just solidified things for me, just, you know, him having a charismatic, honest heart. I knew that my heart would be safe with him, so... And um, that um, compatibility, you know, I used to, you know, you hear people always say, well, this person is a female version or a male version of them. Um, but who want, who who want to be with someone who who is just like them? That would be so boring. But right. being with someone who brings that uniqueness, brings something different to the table. That, like you said earlier, um, complement one another. Um, right. Also. You know, you got to come with one another. And um, because everybody, you bring something different to the table. So, you know, you got the one who's bringing the seriousness. You got one who brings the the light of things in. But it's very unique when you have two people where they bring something different, if I could say that to the most. Um, yeah. When it comes to uh, family, what is the structure of your, of your house? I know everybody do everything different in their household. So when it comes to your household, what are the the number one goals y'all want to see for your family um, in this generation? Well, I think I'll speak on it first. Um, What we strive to teach our children is that entrepreneurship is possible. Um, In our household, they see us sit down, you know, in the office and um, work on, you know, goals, work on, you know, invoices, work on goals and work on contracts. They see us do all that kind of stuff. And we have 14, 7, 2, and 4. And so they see it. And what we've always told them is that entrepreneurship is possible. You can be successful in it. It's not going to be something that's going to be easy, but if you have a job in corporate America, that job is not necessarily easy as well. Nothing is easy in this world. And so um, our household uh, cheers for entrepreneurship. 
you know, we kind of look at our children and see what they're interested in and if, you know, they were to go an entrepreneurship route, you know, which way would they go? Um, and then, you know, having order and balance um, in our household is um, a priority because things can kind of get out of whack pretty quickly. Um, just, you know, the busy, everyday um, things that we have going on with our children, their activities, school, and things of that nature, things can really get hectic. Um, We've also tried to incorporate dating a little bit more. Um, Our children just started daycare in August, our two smaller ones. Um, and so we have a little bit more time to kind of date and enjoy each other when we're not working together. So um, for me, I just say figuring out that balance and, um, <clears throat> you know, to a schedule to organize uh, will make the balance a little bit easier to cope with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, the balance is very, very important um, from being, I know, being on um, entrepreneurs, being married, I mean, having a family. Um, and also, I know the benefits of being an entrepreneur, having your own, you better to have the time to better know time for each other and time with the children. I know when you're working for someone else, the time is limited, I want to say, when you're working for someone else. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. By the time you work, you be tired, and then everything go haywire, but the benefit of being an entrepreneur, like I said, you have that balance of uh, marriage, children, um, entrepreneurship. Now, like I said, I just love to see the structure of the man and the woman working together, and I'm seeing how God is just really bringing everything back to the forefront, because everything has been so negatized, where you see single, single, single mothers and You've seen the fatherless homes, but you very seldom will see the man in the home with his wife working together. And I respect that to the highest, especially to the man in the household um, for what he's doing, because we don't see a lot of that in our generation. We Mm -hmm. just see more single women, single mothers, fatherless homes. Um, when it comes to the marriage, what are the number one? What are, y'all y'all married besides the, the children? Y'all married. What is y'all number one goal um, to keep y'all marriage successful? What would you say, man? Um, alone. Yeah. Um, we would say. Um, faith, you know, having a personal relationship with God because Larry's relationship with God and my relationship with God, even though we're married, you have to be able to know how to have a relationship with God yourself. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? So um, he's always been the head of our marriage. Um, and we use him and his guidance to kind of order our steps, whether, you know, it's within the marriage or uh, professionally. So I would say faith. Um, enjoying each other, I think, um, is another good one because, you know, people just – assume because we work together, we live together, we do a lot of things together, that we're spending time together. Um, Work is work, no matter if we do it separately or together. You know what I mean? But I think the true Mm -hmm. essence of enjoying each other is unplugging from everything and just taking the time to notice each other. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's a good thing. And then, you know, we receive a lot of mentorship from other fellow husband and wife teams. 
Like, um, there are a lot of husband and wife teams. Um, some of them are landscape, some of them are pest control, some of them, you know, sell actual products. And we kind of, um, we see from afar, but then we get to talk to them firsthand. And just having a um, positive role model that has been married, that is 100% totally committed to each other, just being around that atmosphere um, helps along the way as well. So just, I would say, faith, um, enjoying each other, you know, appreciating one another, and then being around, you know, positive mentors and role models that are not only in business but 100% committed to each other with marriage, faith, and family as well, I think is our number one goal. And we hope that, you know, people that watch our journey as we go along, uh, we can inspire them too. Now, we're not saying that every day is a sunny day. We have our disagreements. We have our, you know, things going on. We're 100% human, <laughs> And we're transparent about that because every day is not a sunny day. But, you know, when you realize what your purpose is, what your vision is, what your goal is, and you stay 100% committed to that, then, you know, God will work everything else out and it will fall into place. And I agree with what you're saying because God got to be the very first foundation in any relationship with us. Uh, marriage, business, he got to be first in everything. So that's, the, that's the foundation to keep everything together is him, his word, his principles um, that we'll have to apply on a regular basis. Um, not like we're not going to prolong the time. Uh, I think y'all take time out that bitch is scared to be a part of the broadcast. Um, for those that's, that's single looking to get married, um, um, there are those who may be young and in marriage. Um, what advice would you give to a person who wants to be married? And what advice would you give to a person who's young and they're married? They're probably like a couple months when they're married. But what advice would you give them to keep their marriage on the right path? Cause I know too much. I know in the world today, there's so much stuff going on in our world, especially with social media, where you have, you know, men who may be getting tempted, enticed by other women. Um what advice can you give to them to you know, keep that marriage together? The person you say you're going to vow to, um, to keep that marriage in the right direction. What what advice can you give them? Larry, uh, you want to comment on that? Well, um, I think for me, um, what I would say is, first of all, you got to figure out what you want. For a marriage, just like if you were going to buy a house or going to buy a car, when people buy a house or a car, they have a wish list. I got to have a pool. I got to have this. I don't want this. I don't want that. So you got to figure out what you want, first and foremost. And then you got to be figured, then you have to figure out what you're willing to give. A relationship isn't all about what someone can offer you, you have to be able to offer that other person something as well. It has to be reciprocated, basically. The balance has to be equal. That's why they say husband and wife have to be equally yoked, in my opinion. Um, I would say um, just realizing marriage is not just a title. It's work. And you have to, you know, have determination to have a successful marriage. And you have to um, be willing to compromise. And you have to be willing to have open communication. Everything, you know, can't be one-sided. You have to be able to see the other person's point of view, and they have to be able to see yours. Um, And so I think, that's the foundation. You got to know what you want. You got to know what you're going to be willing to give. You got to, you know, 
be willing to just a hundred percent work it out with that person. Um and of course, you know, you, you gotta have faith and you gotta have God in the mix of everything. So that's you know, in my opinion, I think that's that's the recipe of someone that wants to be married, you got to be willing to figure out, you know, what you want and if you're that person that can offer what that person wants from you going forward. That's right. And um the another thing I know people forget about is because when you're with someone, you know, you got to die to yourself that is not about you. you know, a lot of people think, well, I'm getting this marriage it's all about me, but you have to think about your partner as well also because you got to think about their feelings and their, you know what I'm saying, their opinions also because um, I know a lot of times a house divided cannot stand. But, right. you know, a lot of times you know, people feel like, well, I ain't got to tell my, especially men, like, I ain't got to tell my wife nothing. I run it. I run things. But you got to think about her feelings just like she got to think about your feelings. And Going back to communicate, you got to communicate. And um, I know you said something earlier, which you touched that you better talk to your husband about things that won't pass no judgment on you. Um, I think that's, a, that's the thing that we miss out on, too, of being open with each other, especially if you're in a relationship with your wife or husband. Being open. The Bible said that um, Adam and Eve was naked and they was not ashamed. Um being naked in a in a spiritual standpoint where I can be open with this person, I can talk to this person, tell them my fears, my my concerns, the things that I've been through. Um, how does that keep that all together? I think that keep all that together of being mature. Um, do you think people are, are immature when it comes to being open? In your opinion, do you think people are just immature to that area of being open? <laughs> Well, I think it just depends on the person and it depends on the type of relationship that you get into. You know, when, uh, you know, it just depends on the personality of the two people in the relationship, I believe. Because if you got somebody that is coming into a relationship being completely open and the other person is not being as open as the other person, then, you know, the person that's being completely open is going to feel, you know, like the other person is holding something back. So I think it just depends on the personality. I make Larry, in my opinion, I make Larry comfortable enough to be open with me and vice versa, you know. Um, and so you have to be comfortable. That's why I was saying when we first got together, Larry made me feel comfortable enough where I could share certain things with him and I knew he wasn't going to be judgmental. I could tell him any and everything, you know. We're not just husband and wife and life partners, you know. I consider him my best friend, and so... If I have something that I feel like I need to tell somebody, that's the first person that I'm going to with it. And so I think it just depends on the two people that are in the relationship and how willing they are to be open and transparent with one another. And that's what's and that's what's up. Um, keeping the one hundred. Um, and I'm glad you said something. And that just confirmation when you said being each other's best friend. And we forgot the element because when you with someone, we just think, oh, that's my lover, that's my wife, that's my husband. But we forget the best friend aspect because you should be able to, with your best friend, y'all should be able to, like you said, more than life partners. But there's a person that you lay with, a person you eat with, a person that you spend time with, a person you set goals with, but also had that openness where you could cry in front of each other, laugh in front of each other. Just be goofy, be yourself. And uh, I know um, Larry was saying earlier, he just knew that you was the one. He just had that feeling. And I just know when you know that person is the one, 
automatically you just I believe you just open up to them because you know that that's the one that's that's for you. Um, we're about to get ready to close out. Um, what is y'all? What do y'all see y'all legacy when it comes to your business? Um, when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to your family, at the end of the day, what do y'all want y'all legacy to be after it's all said and done? Go ahead. I'll I'll answer first and then I'll let him answer. Um, I want our legacy to consist of when people see us separately or they see us together, I want them to realize that we took our talents that God blessed us with and Throughout a lot of prayer and determination and commitment, Mm -hmm. we found a way to not only monetize it, but a way to kind of minister to our community, Mm -hmm. mentor others that come behind us, Mm -hmm. um, because we appreciate the mentors that have sold into us. Um, And just for people to realize, you know, we're a lawn and landscape business. But you can take this thing and make it as large as you feel like it needs to go. Like there are limitless possibilities of any business owner or entrepreneur of what your business can do and what your business can be. But you have to have that belief. You have to have that faith there, and you have to be able to put the effort and have the drive and ambition to make it happen. And so I want our kids, I want people that we're connected with, whether it's social media or formal or informal, to realize that, you know, anything is possible. Anything is possible personally or professionally. Um, and just that, you know, we decided to just go for it. You know, a lot of times the Lord puts something in your spirit and the flesh doesn't move when the spirit says move. Uh, Sometimes you have to take a step back and say, I hear you, Lord. You're telling me to move. I'm going to move. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what this business is going to do, but I'm just going to take your hand and follow your lead. So um, I think that's what our legacy consists of. Um, And whether our children want to take this on or whatever we decide to do with the business, just realize, you know, that um, some of the largest companies started in a small room or in a garage. And so, you know, if those companies can do it, a company – from Mobile, Alabama, no matter what industry or service or product that you provide, it's possible for you to do the same thing and achieve what some of these larger companies have achieved. And that's what it's all about. Um, Like I said, um, like I said, that was thumbs up, and like I said, it's a beautiful thing, and like I said, I respect y'all to the highest. Um, as you know, as a as a man and wife, um, doing what you're doing, um, for your business, um, your marriage, your family, and many blessings upon everything that y'all do, that everything y'all took will prosper. Um, from this year to to beyond, and that's what I just want to say on that. Um. So we ready, ready to get up the airways. Do y'all have, do y'all have any final remarks? How can people get in contact um, with you when it comes to your business? Um, so listen, always know how to get in contact with you. Oh, uh, we got I am Green Magic Instagram, Green Magic Landscape on Facebook dot com. You can reach me by email, Larry at treasure to Green dot com. 
Um, okay, so I am Jerry Magic on Instagram, Green Magic Lens K-I-N-C. Um, that's our business Facebook page. Um, let's see. Uh, www dot tragic the number two green magic dot com. That is in the works of um being composed. That's our website. It's not up yet, but it's currently um being composed. Um. And just, you know, Corita Cohen, Larry Cohen on Facebook, you can reach out to us, call us, email us. Um, we would love to service you. Um, if, you know, if you've been experiencing tickets or citations for overgrowth um, with your yard or your neighbor or somebody who has overgrowth, um, give us a call. We're very reasonable, and we will love to service you. Thanks so much for the opportunity for us to speak today and be a part of the broadcast. We really appreciate it. And our prayer is that uh, the podcast, you know, grows bigger and better in 2020 and beyond. And I do appreciate you. And I thank y'all for taking time. My job is good. That means a lot to me. Um, when y'all took time, I know be scared to be a part of the broadcast. That means a lot to me because you didn't have to do that. And that means a lot. And I'm very grateful and thankful um, for y'all and what y'all doing. And we're about to get the call. Close of the broadcast this morning. Hope everybody have a great day. Um, if you're here in the city of Mobile, it's supposed to be sunny all day today, which would be a good thing. But also it's supposed to be cold this evening, too. I think it's going to be low. It's going to be in the 30s, I think, tonight. So if you're going out this evening, Stay warm. Um, but most important thing, man, love each other. Love each other. Respect each other. Um, work together. Um, it, you know, it's a new start for everybody. Uh, whatever happened in the past, let's stay in the past. Work those things out and uh, embrace the new. Um, because we wouldn't even be here this morning because God opened our eyes this morning to see this day because he didn't have to do that. He could have left us Amen. in our beds this morning. So always be thankful. Always be grateful. Um, work things out, you know, don't give a place to the devil like Paul told, don't give a place to the devil, so don't give a place to the devil at all today. Um, so we want you to have a great weekend, have a great day. Once again, if you're in the city of Mobile, stay warm, because it's going to be cool today. And once again, enjoy your day, set your goals, um, whatever you're going to do, do it, do it big, be consistent, stay disciplined, and most importantly, always stay prayed up. And I'll see y'all next time here on Walking This Way, Impact Wars Power. Bless, powerful, mighty day. You are now listening to the most talked about blog talk radio station in the universe. Walking His Way, Impact Voice Radio. Be prepared to have your mind stimulated, your spirit elevated in ways you couldn't even imagine. Introducing your host and the mastermind behind this unforgettable experience, Furman Jackson Jr.